Servant rules. Your voice must never be heard by the ladies and gentlemen of the house unless they speak to you directly and then speak as little as possible. Always give room. That is, if you encounter one of your employers in the house or betters on the stairs, you are to make yourself as invisible as possible, turning yourself toward the wall and averting your eyes. My book, The Real Life Downton Abbey, tells you everything you need to know about the period, the Edwardian period that inspired the TV series you know and love. And it tells you everything about the lives of the rich people, the servants that worked for them, and the ordinary people who depended often on the servants' pay to survive. I think the fascination comes from the fact that we now believe that we live in a classless society and society then was very much class bound and people actually did know their place and were very limited in what they could do because of that, because there were a lot of rules that people had to stick to in their lives, even the wealthy. Even the very wealthiest people could only behave in a certain way, particularly the women. So there were many things that we now take for granted that didn't exist back then. For instance, divorce. Divorce was scandal and divorce was shame. Illegitimacy was another thing that was scandalous. A servant expecting an illegitimate baby could lose her job, her livelihood and would be consigned to the workhouse. It was as drastic as that. Men, especially the wealthy men, could pretty much do whatever they liked. The wealthiest ones at the top of the tree, their main preoccupation was money, their estate, running their estates, finances, and politics, because they were the same people. The people who owned the wealthy estates were the same people who went into politics by tradition. So the men were preoccupied with money and status. The women, the wealthy women, were preoccupied with running these sumptuous homes and organizing the servants that worked beneath them. The hostesses would know in advance when they were drawing up their guest lists who was having an affair with whom. So they would make sure that they very carefully positioned them in bedrooms close to each other. Um, and everybody would know what everybody else was doing, but nobody talked about it openly. It was gossiped about, and of course, the servants knew about it because they had to go into the rooms and pick up afterwards. So the servants knew everything, and I mean everything. What led to me writing this book was, first of all, a fascination with the period, with the Edwardian period, but secondly, the contrast itself between the two worlds. And when I discovered in my research how poor many millions of people were in this country, I realized that the contrast was even greater than I'd believed. Some aristocratic families were very good to their servants and took a great deal of care about their welfare. But others really just saw their servants as people who were there to just do things for them. They didn't really see them as human beings.